I go back to a statement uh, by Hans Urs von Balthasar, who's one of my theological heroes, and he said, we've had enough sitting theology, we need a kneeling theology. And uh, there's that, that term in German, you know, the uh, Sitzfleisch, right? When you have a lot of Sitzfleisch, it means that you can sit for a long time at your desk and you can do your work. <laughs> and he would say, I think he was sort of playing with that, that we've had enough of the more academic, yeah. detached style of theologizing. We need a kneeling theology. Yeah. Theology on the knee. That's right. Yeah. That know how to kneel at the liturgy, know how to kneel in prayer. Rigorously academic. Look at von Balthasar. There's, there's hardly anybody smarter, more cultured than Urs von Balthasar. But yet it came out of a very deep liturgical uh, piety. To me, that's one of the marks. I'll tell you a story. When I was uh, in Paris at the Institut Catholique back in the very late 80s, early 90s, uh, a number of the professors were um, of that more detached, purely academic style. But the man I chose is my thesis director, Father Michel Corbin, he's a great Jesuit scholar. I came into the seminar room, and I was the first one to arrive. And there he was, and he had his chapelet, he had his little rosary in his hand, praying. And that struck me. There is a man who does kneeling theology. And it turned out that Corbin was a great expert in Aquinas and Anselm, also Balthazar. Mm -hmm. And once I saw those connections, I understood where he was coming from. Yeah. That, to me, validates a theology. You've got to be grounded in the great tradition. Uh, the danger is superficiality and riding with the, uh, the winds of the, of the time. You know, I think when we were coming of age, there was a great stress placed on reading the signs of the times and being with the modern world. And I remember when I was a, a kid seeing the slogan, the world sets the agenda for the church. That's a terrible slogan. That's ter I mean, Christ has the agenda for the church. And when you, when you say the world has the agenda for the church, you've just made the church subservient to whatever the um, zeitgeist of the time is. So I think that's, the, that's always the danger. You know? And a good theology is grounded in the great tradition. Now, it dialogues creatively and intelligently with the contemporary culture. That's indispensably important. You can't simply go back to 13th century Paris and say, well, I'm just going to repeat what Thomas Aquinas said. No, no, you, you move into Thomas Aquinas' world, you understand him from the inside, and then you dialogue with the culture around us. Yeah, the hermeneutic of it as well. Yeah, yeah. and that's a very important role. And we think of, um, of John Paul, they said he knew Marx better than the Marxists, that he could out-argue them on Marxist grounds. Right. See, I think that's a biblical move. Think of um, Moses, who kind of grows up behind enemy lines. Uh -huh. The same is true of, of Queen Esther. The same is true of Daniel. The same is true of Joseph. This archetype of kind of understanding the alien culture from, from the within. inside yeah. so that you can, when it's proper and when the moment has arrived, you can undermine it. You can engage it. You know? I think that's the key. You got to know the contemporary culture really well, but then you're informed by this rich tradition and then you can bring it to bear.